And we are live. TC Talks took a big break and now we're back during the COVID times that everyone is enjoying in some way and not enjoying in many other ways. And I, I feel for everyone who really is having a hard time out there and more than ever, it's time to figure some things out in terms of what's a nine to five and what's not, not nine to five. What does nine to five even mean? And that's what we were taught growing up to pursue that kind of life. And we have some individuals here who have their nine to five stories as well as beyond that. Oftentimes they're doing a million things at once, even if it's within the same realm or different ones. And that's what we're here to discover. My name is Ari. And I'm going to be here to invite you to enjoy these people and their stories. And we're going to start with Tanya over here. And she has a great smile on her face and she's really excited to talk about whatever it is she wants to talk about. Because I'm discovering just as much as you are. <laughs> okay, Off thanks, you go. Ari. <laughs> thanks, Ari. Um, my name is Tanya Yoganathan. I work nine to five for the government of Ontario as an advisor. And outside of nine to five, I am, uh, I, up until recently, I had founded uh, a photography company with my husband, uh, Anuj Yoganathan. The company is called Impressions by Anuj. I shot with him for a few years up until, um, and including pregnancy of my firstborn, um, and then uh, slid off of photography and moved towards management of the business. And more recently, I have founded my own personalized goods um, uh, company. Uh, right now, we're primarily working with personalized blankets, and, and that's about it. That was great. It's great. We'll, we'll get back to some of those blankets soon. I mean, we all want to keep warm and so do our little ones. Mayu, I think you're here and you have some exciting stuff for us to hear. Um, I don't know how exciting it is, but <laughs> so I'm a uh, real estate investor, not, not an agent, just an investor. Um, I've got about 18 properties between Toronto and Windsor. Um, I guess my story grew up with kind of the opinion that like real estate is wealth. So I've always had kind of that um, interest. And a very strong interest in like the overall financial independence movement. Um, I guess my nine to five, I work at the Auditor General's office. That was pretty recent, switched over in May. Um, and before that, I was at Ernst Young as a uh, working in the audit side as a manager there. Um, wasn't really a nine to five, more of kind of like the nine to eight, nine to nine. Um, but as my real estate side, I think needed more time. Um, I made the switch and now I do real estate investing as I guess my side hustle. Yeah, there you go. I, I don't know about how that is a, defined as a side hustle. We'll get into that a little later. My yeah. up always said, uh, if you have a chimney, you're good. You clearly have 18 of them. So, you know, <laughs> you're really good doing well. That's great. Great to hear. And Millie, the last but not least. Hi, my name is Thistle Millie. So for those of you who don't know me, I go by both names. Um, my background is uh, nine to five, I guess you can say, um, is in finance. So I used to work in commercial real estate as a property accountant. Um, for many, many, many years. Um, but I've always, like, I pretty much grew up having a side hustle. I think I started working at a banquet hall when I was like 15. <laughs> and then then I was a waitress while I was in university and then bartending. So I've pretty much worked most of the weekends all of my life. And even when I switched to 9 to 5, um, I think about five, six years ago, I think I wanted something of my own. And I didn't have Instagram. I didn't know anything about makeup but I knew I loved it and just put myself through makeup school and yeah five years later here I am well we will get into that journey a little later um I think some people are like I don't know who Ari is even though maybe they do or they don't I mean I basically took a break from TC too um in the online presence you might remember me as the guy who hosted TC on the street um, if you don't, that's cool. You can go back into our channel and check out that nonsense that we were creating back when formals were a thing. And I'm that's sure beautiful. I saw all three of you there at some point or another. I'm sure I've interviewed one at least. I remember um, uh, it was, it was oh, well, definitely. Oh, he had some, he had some great attire on. I was, I'm kind of jealous of you if anything. Um, but uh, yeah, that's who, that's who I am. And in terms of We've been talking about nine to five a lot. Uh, that just defines what we thought a career would be and why we're talking to these individuals and even why I'm here is quite simply, there's more to that. And I currently work as a technologist at the University of Guelph Humber and I teach all the media stuff that I preach when I'm on TC on the street and working with cameras and audio and stuff. And outside of that, I'm freelancing, doing this stuff, showing you guys all these stories. So I guess, we can go back to the beginning. I mean, how do you think 
your education played a role in how you got here? It's quite simply, we could just say, oh, I just, I just did whatever and then decided later. But like, Mayu, how do you, how could you speak on your education, how you got to 18? Yeah, I, I'd argue it's kind of more um, nurture rather than my education. So I always had a big focus on the personal finance. Um, and yeah, like I, I went to undergrad and I did business as, in my, as my undergrad. So that kind of helped. Um, so I don't think my accounting knowledge really influenced my real estate investing, but it was more so kind of your friends and families and the, kind, the, way, you grow, the way you grow up. Um, with the importance of kind of financial literacy and the financial independence. And then it all kind of like rolled up into um, me getting started in real estate at, I think, a younger age than most people. Okay. Um, what do you have to add to that, Millie, in terms of how you progressed with your education or what you chose and how it led you to where you are right now? Um, I think the more I did finance, the more I knew I didn't want to do that the rest of my life. <laughs> And, but it was great. It was great money and I learned a lot, but it also helped me in terms of my business, in terms of having the expenses and doing your income statement and balance sheet. Like, you know, just your, my finance background helped me personally, but it also made me want to push harder because I just told myself that this is where I'm going to be stuck the rest of my life. And I do, I know that education is important. I'm so glad that I have that and I have that as my background. Um, but for me, that helped me and the maturity of, having worked a full-time job, having worked nine to five helped me with my business as well um, to run it better than just, oh, it's a social media business, but rather than, yes, it's a business because I worked at other businesses as a whole doing the year in financial. So I know how the seasons are. And so I would say it really definitely gave me the push for my business anyway. I got nothing to add to that. That was really well <laughs> said. I mean, you really spoke the gamut on that. But Tanya? Um, I'm actually going to have to take a page out of my book. Yeah. It was more about the um, the nurturing of it rather than the nature. Um, I I don't think my education had very much to do with my side hustles. Perhaps you know I did do a poli sci undergrad in university along with a BSc psych major. I had planned to go into a ministry job in health. I ended up going into a ministry job in infrastructure instead. Um, so perhaps there's a little bit in that. I do policy, policy analysis, but if we're talking about outside side hustle, it's purely um, a nurture thing. My parents had their own catering business when I was uh, eight years old and no, even younger, maybe about six. And from a very, very young age, we were taught a lot of things about like work ethic and working hard and being disciplined and you know my brother and I to <laughs> um had her had her hat in child labor when we were younger and it was all about like you know you have to peel five buckets of potatoes and three buckets of carrots and then you can go outside and play and so we just like rush to like peel everything in order to get out and play and it was never really cons like it never really came to us as something that was onerous or difficult it was just kind of normal and it was Part of the game you know my mom worked a nine to five they had catering on the weekends plus she was doing um extra learning on top of that for certifications plus she raised two kids we had like five extracurriculars each they never missed a class they never missed a performance you know hard like discipline and work ethic was kind of built in I guess there's a nature aspect and a nurture aspect to that. I mean, I was about to say, but I, I felt like you would get there yourself with all that nurturing. Um, we really heard a great history from you. And uh, I think that's important because what I'm hearing from all of you is that, you know, not that education doesn't matter because we all think it does matter in different ways and there's different values that you take from that. But it's how you grow with that education, the process and what you take from it no matter what you do, if it's that hilarious li liberal arts degree that everyone makes fun of or something a little more robust in today's STEM community, you know, engineering and all that. Mm -hmm. But what I'm hearing is it's the growth in yourself and the maturity that you get. And what I didn't hear is, well, I did hear a little bit from Tanya and maybe from Millie a little as well, but family and friends. I mean, was there ever a point where some of them were like, no, you shouldn't do this? Or were they the ones who were like, hey, have you ever thought of, uh, you're really good at like uh, painting people's faces. You ever uh, ever think you should do that for a living? Uh, Mayu, I guess we'll go, I'll go to Mayu first since he had this curious look on his face. 
No, that was, that was a great question. Um, I think when I bought my first property, my parents were kind of like, oh yeah, like good job. Like, you know, you're, you're on the right track with things. And then- um, yeah, Good job, you know. And they were kind of like, okay, like cool. Um, and then, you know, as things kind of escalate um, and they realized that thinking a lot of time and effort into it, they were kind of um, cautious and cautiously scared for me per se. Um, and, and to this day, like, I, I don't think my parents really fully comprehend what I, I do or, or anything like that um, with good reason, right? Like, I think our parents' generation is um, used to certain things, right? Like, you grew up in Sri Lanka, you probably had one house, you came here, you have one house, you just want to live, like, a, a very kind of, like, status quo lifestyle versus um, I think all of us are, are kind of doing things outside of the status quo and challenging that, right? Um, so it's not that they were, you know, super go ahead, keep doing what you're doing and, and whatever, but they were just kind of cautious um, about the level of risk that I was taking, I think. Whoa, that's a good phrasing right there. <laughs> level of risk. I mean, that's important too. I mean, that's what your parents, that's what your friends even would, when you're having a little, some talks, that's what they get yeah. to. And I think um, friends is, uh, that one's a little bit different too, right? So not a lot of my friends are um, entrepreneurial per se. So what I, like, I ended up kind of just stepping outside of my immediate friends network, um, going out to more like real estate events, meeting other people that are in the same realm um, and kind of surrounding myself with them. So that, that really helped me go, okay, I'm not crazy with what I'm trying to do. Here. So it's interesting that your close uh, knit friend circle isn't, you're like the outlier there. Um, yeah. yeah, it was like when I was first getting started, everyone's kind of like, oh yeah, like real estate's cool. So like you kind of talk to them and so on. Um, but you, I think, reach a point, and I'm sure you know, Tanya and Millie can kind of allude to this as well, you reach a point where you could either stop, but then if you want to keep going, you'd be like the only one that's kind of pushing through on your own versus if you surround yourself with people that have already done it, it just makes it so much more easier and it gives you kind of a pathway, right? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Well, I've been saying well said a lot. I don't know what else to say, but <laughs> it's, all, it's all good knowledge. I mean, um, Millie, how about you? Um, there was a time in the uh, Thummel social space that everyone and their moms and aunties were becoming makeup mm -hmm. artists, face painters, um, whatever, what have yeah. you. So when I first started doing makeup, I didn't even have Instagram. So I wasn't even aware. And this was right. like more than five years ago. I wasn't even aware of how many makeup artists there. I thought I was like the first of maybe five or 10 makeup artists. Like I, had, like I really didn't have social media. I didn't care for it. Um, but luckily for me, most of my closest friends that I grew up with are not in any um, certain industries or social, like they don't rely on social, social media for their business. So if it ever gets out of hand, they put me in my place and I'm so glad that they do that. But at the same time, they do support me. Um, they have always supported me. Um, no, I'm not going to say they all. There's a, maybe a handful that will be like, mm, are you sure? Oh, this is a great side business to have. They'll never say that, yes, you can turn this into a full-time thing. Um, and again, they don't understand. And they would understand the struggle. They would understand, oh, my God, I got to pose like this and take a picture. And they'll have to like, oh, great. There you go posing. Or there you go and taking selfie. But if you are in it, you'll understand why you're taking the selfie, why you need that. Um, and if you're not, you know, it's, it's a, and I have to explain to them, it's part of the business, you, you have to do it. So they learn to eventually support me and now they'll be like, don't you want to take a selfie, you know? But uh, most of the time they have been pretty supportive. And again, I think it's important to have a lot of friends that's not in your circle because you kind of, you get kind of caught up in that same industry that you're in and then you can't grow from it. So I actually started expanding more to outside of just the wedding industry and doing a lot of editorials that's completely out of my realm and out of my circles that, you know, doesn't pay or doesn't get much likes, but it kind of helped me to expand a little bit and have different support system. And, and like Mai was saying that, um, you could, they only get you as far as they can see um, where the eyes, where they can see the business going, and then you have to take it to the next level. So it's great to have that support, but don't just rely on that support either. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, if, anytime you rely on one avenue, one stream, you're, I mean, that's, that's the whole point of this conversation, not just being in one stream. I think it's also important to note that uh, something that people don't understand about the makeup industry is that there's so many different forms. There's performance, there's theatrical, there's a wedding, there's editorial, like you mentioned. And, you know, if I think if anyone wants to learn more, they now know where to find you. Uh, we'll get those handles at the end, everyone. Uh, so you, you'll get your shout outs at the end. Uh, Tanya, I mean, I, I feel like I'm, I'm imagining a dinner at your place one day and, and you and Anuj are just eating and you're like, you know what? There aren't enough blankets in the world. <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, what do you say? So how, how, how did that conversation go? Or not even that, because that might be a little private, but when you thought of that idea, what was the support like from your friends or family? Okay, so I have now three things to say, because All number right. one, I'm going to answer your question. Number two, I'm going to echo something that Mayu said and add on to it. Number three, I'm going to echo something that Millie said and add on to it. Right, people are paying attention. That's great. <laughs> So number one, Mayu had, had um, spoken about how, you know, our families had come here from Sri Lanka, civil war. Um, they, they, they really went with the status quo, as he said. Um, but I think more like beyond that in this, in this scenario, um, for Impressions by Anuj, when, he had, when we had started Anuj's company, they were fine with me because I wasn't quitting my job. Um, but they weren't fine with Anu doing it because um, mm. Anu, was, Anu was a senior accountant. He's a finance major. He was a senior accountant. And they were like, you know, it's not stable. It's not, you don't know what um, your money will be like. And Anu's father is actually a videographer. And so he had done freelance work for ages. You know, like we have people who Enu shoots now and they're like, yeah, your father shot my wedding in Sri Lanka kind of thing. So like it's generational. And I think because they have such a heavy um, reliance on security, they don't like freelance work as much. They like that constant security of a yeah. nine to five, pay five paycheck because they came here on the basis of survival, right? They didn't come here on the basis of like thriving. They just need to make ends meet. They came here without any resources. They came here without contacts. They came out, they came here without like a totally different worldview, different language, so many obstacles that they had to overcome. So they're just like, like Maya said, you know, we just need the house. We need our nine to five. We need to just get by right now. We have the opportunity and the privilege of being able to go kind of beyond that and to see beyond that, which is huge, right? But they have the worldview of, of a very different perspective. Um, because of their lived experience, right? They, they, they just don't know anything beyond that. So they're very fearful of taking risks. Um, so they were not, both my parents and Anu's parents were not at all supportive. Now, when it came to my business now, they didn't care, technically probably because I'm still working nine to five, um, but also because um, we brought Anu's career into a very successful place. You know, um, he's earning well, we, we live comfortably and, you know, there's, you know, he, we're booking out whatever it is, right? <laughs> I think everyone's seen those photos. <laughs> <laughs> so, but my point is they've seen that, okay, we're not stupid, right? Like we, we are, we're taking risks, but they're calculated risks, they're educated risks. Um, and so I think they're fine. They, they had zero objection to mine because number one, I didn't quit, but I even told them that I would and they seem to have no objection to it. Um, so I think it's just, we've developed some, they've developed some sort of trust or faith in us. Um, to Millie's point, yes, people do not see what goes behind um, having a business that is primarily online or social media or primarily your marketing um, they'll see the end product and they don't see kind of everything that goes behind it in order to get to that place and to answer your question was oh yeah well I guess I answered that kind of within that I said I they were almost wholeheartedly supportive um, oh but how did oh sorry so you had asked how did this come up you, you said people need more blankets it actually wasn't that so the product that I have is honestly nothing new, right? There, there have been personalized baby blankets for years, right? Like for well over a decade. What I felt was a gap in the industry was they didn't have designs that I felt catered to or, or were offered for my culture, my religion, my faith, or my my language, right? I, I could never, I would, I purchased personalized blankets and, you know, I, I didn't get to put my son's Tamil name in a Tamil script or my daughter's yeah. Tamil name in a Tamil script, right? Or I would buy a floral blanket. And yeah, I mean, I love lots of flowers, but the Kartiyapu has a very special significance to me. And so I thought I would love, instead of having pink roses wrapped around my daughter, I would love to have a Kartiyapu wrapped around my daughter. And so since it wasn't out there, I just 
it was kind of over dinner and I was like, Hey, I know, I think like that's something that I could do. And so, I guess I called it. It was over dinner. It was over dinner. I'm pretty sure it was. I mean, uh, you did bring up a good point about, well, not a point per se, but you brought up um, your current situation in which you're doing multiple things. Now, was there a point in each of your lives where you were like, I can do 95, I can do this. Should I do both? Should I split into just one or the other? I mean, Mayu, I, I believe that I'm gonna, not going to assume, but I think what you're doing now is not just one stream. You have 18. You're <laughs> obviously considering many different clients and possibilities. Would you consider that always having a different day because you wouldn't be doing nine to five per se and then something else? You'd just be on a 24-hour clock all the time, right? Yeah, it, it's basically that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I don't really have an answer for that. No, I mean, I mean um, it, it is quite simple, day, yeah. Yeah, every, every day is different. Um, for me, like, I, I think, you know, it, I was doing it basically, like I said before, I was kind of working in a nine to eight, nine to nine type job. Um, and then I would kind of wake up early, do things in the middle of the day during like lunch and so on, and then do things like after work and so on. So as the amount of time that I had to commit to that kind of increase is when I switched into that nine to five. So I see it kind of um, as a ladder. So I switched from my nine to eight to nine to five. And then the <laughs> next step, like if I need to, and when I need to would be to kind of drop off like a day or two. Um, and then, you know, eventually go on to it full time. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I see it. I don't, I don't know about the two of you. Millie, how about you? Um, so I did start off nine to five and then I was doing this outside and like my, like literally most of my days were sometimes 12 hours. And I used to work downtown. So by the time I could go and I would work like eight, 10, sometimes even 14 hours at the office and come back and I do paint my face at like 10, 11 o'clock at night, wash it off at one, two o'clock in the morning, go to sleep and get up. Because I, when you like want something so bad, doesn't matter. Like you have four hours to sleep and you know, um, Tanya's your husband's a photographer. He maybe sleeps two hours, sometimes 45 minutes. And, but you just have to make it work. And then two years ago, I stopped working full time and I was just focusing on makeup, which was amazing because it allowed me to do a lot of um, editorial shoots and like I said, um, go into different branches during the weekdays and then focus on making the money on the weekends. But then I also realized that I was losing a little bit of a life balance because I don't have a second income. Like I live by myself. So I had to always worry about, okay, taking every gig that I can take so that I can pay my you know mortgage and all my other bills. And then um, I thought, you know, it was great. I was able to get to a certain level. And then I also realized I still wanted a, a life balance. Then something hit me about early this year. I said, I think I'm going to work full time for a year or two. So I started going on a couple of interviews. And I don't know if it's the universe or God watching over me. My first day of job was March 16th. And this is before the whole COVID thing. Okay. Like and, I was so, and I was so blessed. And, and in the interview, we had not like, we didn't know anything about coronavirus. I mean, we knew it was out there, but we didn't know when anything was going to get shut down. So the first day, everybody was sent home to work from home. And they asked me, are you comfortable coming to the office? I said, yeah, it's a small office. And I was glad and kind of taking it back to the education um, when we're talking about the second topic. I'm glad that my education came in handy because if it wasn't for that and if I had a second income, like a, like a spouse and, or I was living at home, it'd be different where, okay, if I lost the business for a little while, yes, I can, somebody else can, you know, I can rely on someone else, but it was solely my income. So I was happy that I was able to go back to work full time and it was just great timing because everything got canceled or postponed. Right. So, um, yeah, so it's important to, I think important to, if you're passionate about your side hustle, make it your full-time hustle. And even if you don't physically do that, mentally think of that as that's your number one. But it's also great to have something to fall back on, especially if you don't have um, a second hustle income. Like with Tanya, like you guys have two kids. So it's important that there's one steady income <laughs> and then, you know, you can focus on that as well. And then your business will actually grow a lot more because you're not worried about taking every little gig that comes along and focusing on like once you get your name to a certain level, you can just focus on the ones that are really important. Yeah. I think uh, very diverse, but similar answers all around, if that makes sense. And it's the vaguest summary that I can come up with in my mind right now. You know, when I think about everything that I've done in the past, I mean, I've worked just as many as you have in so many different industries, hopped when we were young, going to like flower shops. To, uh, you, you said you were a waitress, Millie. And 
there's so many things that you can learn from, but I think when you are in the, in the mindset of trying to diversify yourself, that's where this all comes from. It does, I, I don't know. I hate, saying side hustle or main hustle or nine to five. I think those are garbage terms. In fact, <laughs> I just like doing what I do. And I know that everyone needs to be in certain boxes and that's totally fine. Everyone needs to, that, that's how humans work. We work on patterns. I think what I want to ask with that rant is what have you learned about yourself <laughs> going through all of this? Um, Mayu, I think we'll start with you because the thing is, just like I made that quip about everyone wanted to be a makeup artist at one point, it seems like everyone wants to be a real estate mogul at one point. There's so many uh, reality shows about it. I mean, um, there's a couple good ones on Netflix that um, my partner and I have been watching. They're pretty fun. So yeah, what have you learned about yourself specifically and how that has helped you? Um, I mean, there's a lot of good things and bad things that I guess I, I picked up. Um, Let's start I off with the bad things. Yeah, I definitely work the best under pressure. Like I, like meaning if there's no pressure, I'm not getting anything done. <laughs> so I learned that about myself, um, good and bad. Um, I, I've kind of learned about my own like thought process about how I um, like analyze deals, how I kind of like, um, like it's a trade-off I think between the amount of work and, and how much you're making as a return and things like that. Um, I've now kind of surrounded myself with a pretty solid team. So it took me a while to develop that, whether it's kind of your agents and your brokers and your investors and stuff like that. Um, so it took me some time to develop that, but, um, yeah, I kind of know my skill set now and what I'm good and bad at and what I can outsource and what I have to do myself. How about you, Tanya? Go to Millie first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> first pass off. <laughs> Um, I think what I learned is comparison and we can't help it. We do compare and um, just kind of like, you know, especially with social media. And I mean, this is coming from not just me, but a lot of my friends as well. You feel the pressure, the pressure to constantly keep up constantly. Oh, I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. And about a year and a half ago, I took four months off of social media, which it's not really great for my business, but I had to do it for my mental sanity. And that's the whole thing about balance as well. And I had to like retrain my thought process. Um, I was actually born in Sri Lanka and I was in the war, um, like hiding in bunkers and things like that's how I grew up. And so my mindset was partly like always like survive, survive, survive. And when I came here and watching my parents work really hard, and that's why I started working when I was 15. And I pretty much literally worked two jobs since I was like 22 years old, plus going to university. And and it's like, if you don't uh, work, then that means you're not being productive. If you don't work on the weekends, you're not being productive. And it took me until recently, probably the last year or two, to say it's okay to take a break. So I had to learn to um, appreciate every accomplishment. I had to learn to also motivate myself like Mayu, unless it's pressure, I like, I can't work. Like if there's like a sorry that I have to do, I would have it for a week and I would start pleading it two days before I'm like kicking myself. Why do I wait? But Again, you know, now I'm learning to, okay, I can, you know what, I have five days, let's start on the fifth day instead of the last day. So motivating, um, learning to just relax and re give yourself a reward and not always work because the reason why we work so hard is because we want to feel accomplished and we don't ever stop enough to feel accomplished. And so, yeah, just to give yourself a break, appreciate it. Don't compare yourself so much. Everybody has their own journey. So like, I guess if I can sum it up, yeah, those three would be my major learning curves. Yeah, social media is definitely a, a double-edged sword. I mean, sometimes you're bored and you just flick through some posts and you're like, great. And then other times you're like, man, how did that person go to that island or whatever? Uh, yeah. And then you start counting money and you figure out what their history is. It's like, wait a minute, they were in New Zealand here and then they were in Australia here, but then they were in France on this day. That's not right. This is a later gram. Come on. So you go down the rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, went to, and you know it's like two a.m. and you should be sleeping. But that, that that's why it's such a double-edged sword. I mean, it, it it's social media is great and it, it's bad. I mean, that's just a topic for another day. But uh, we'll get back to you, Tanya, because I know you passed the buck <laughs> a little bit. But school's coming back. Um, so I think it kind of ties into Millie's um, comment about not comparing. But even within yourself, I think a lot of um, there are people out there who are perfectionists and it's really hard to let go before you start. And so, you know, um, with any business, like even my business, right? 
it's not perfect right now. Right now, my website, it has this great personalization feature. You can do a lot of stuff in English, but I to build the capacity to do every single language on a solo Shopify website is yeah. very difficult when you have no resources and you're just starting, right? So would I like to have a, a website that's already ready and boom, you can have your Hindi font, your Tamil font and whatever name you want? Yeah, of course I would. And it was really hard for me to let that go and just be like, I will just have to launch and and like earn and then hire a developer and then do it. You know, it was really, really hard for me to just let go of that because that would make it so much better for the brand. And that is something that I want to do. Um, and so you want to wait till it's perfect, right? You want to wait till your, your prototype has been pushed through 5,000 times perfectly every time. And then you're like, okay, now let's start. But if you don't start, you, you miss out on so much learning um, that only happens once you start. Yeah, it's, Finding that's like a hard thing for me to just like, just be like, okay, this is as good as it's going to get right now. Just have, even though you know in your head there's other things that would make it better. That's, that's like a really hard thing to let go of. I definitely appreciate how you can be, all three of you can be vulnerable with how much you've given to yourself and that you do need to take breaks at times and that it's not linear progression and that you can waste your time on Instagram per se. Um, it's all, I mean, it's that philosophy of the journey's different for everyone. Um, I think we're, we're going we're gonna to go towards the end of this, but I, I do want to know with respect to your specific industries, if someone were to ask you, how do I get into it? Or what's the best advice you can give? I'll let you think about that for a second while I go on a rant. What would you say? And now here is my rant. I started in engineering. And while I was in engineering in university, uh, I felt that I sucked at it. And I, I did kind of go into it because it was kind of a South Asian stereotype. And my school, SATEC in Scarborough, there were a lot of engineers coming out of there. So I felt like I, I should have done that too. And then when I was there, I, I just, I, I wasn't a very good student. I wasn't mature enough. So I switched, I went to Ryerson for media and that's where I found what I needed to do. And that's how I learned what, that's how I learned what my path would be and where it would lead and what kind of person and student I would be. So I kind of just went from there. We lost Millie for a second. I'm sure she'll Sorry, be back. I'm not, I don't know what I pressed. Oh, no, oh, no worries. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, you're, I, I don't know how your arm is not tired. I was going to say the same yeah. thing. I was like, oh, <laughs> are you holding that phone this whole time? On my, I'm resting my arm on my legs and just like kind of holding. But when you've been holding makeup brushes for hours, <laughs> This is so is that your uh, tip right now? Like what you've learned the most? Uh, can we start with you? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, what I would um, what I would tell somebody who's starting off is, I know a lot of people are self taught uh, makeup artists or hairstylists, and it's great if you have that creativity. I did go to school because I also think learning certain things in theory is important um, and learning uh, the business side of it. So when I went to school and it wasn't like I did years of school, I did, but I, I've done like several classes um, just because I want to keep learning uh, new crafts and I want to learn from uh, different artists. But initially when I went to school, they taught the business side of it and they taught the basic of it, basics of the business and they start the basics of the history of makeup too, which I thought was really important. And it's not something that you can learn on YouTube unless you have hours to kill and just like keep watching. But um, so I would say first, I think it's important, even whether it's a four month course or a two year course, just to like, and you kind of learn even just going to school, do I really want to do this? I and mean, you don't have to invest $5,000, but even like $1,000 or something like that, just so you have the background. And don't say no in the beginning to anything. I did not say no. I said yes to everybody. And you know, in our industry, there's way too many collaborations. So I say no now. Oh, you want to collab? You want to collab? Yeah. Oh my God. I, I can't even stand that word anymore. Most of, like most of the time, some people are amazing and there are a lot that will take advantage of you. So I say in the beginning, do as much work because it's networking. For me, I didn't care about that gig. I didn't care about that shoot. I cared about networking. I cared. And every single time I did a shoot, I noticed my makeup improved. I mean, I get a free model and I get photos. And I mean, sometimes I would work at some of my shoots were 19 hours long, didn't complain. And I met the most amazing people through these shoots. And a few of my editorial work uh, got on the cover of a magazine or inside magazine that sold it online or like at the stores. It's because I didn't say no in the beginning. And through those people I would meet, 
a coordinator or a photographer or or um, a hairdresser or or a stylist. And so basically, don't say no in the beginning. But once you get to a certain level, don't feel bad to say no. And I would feel bad to say no. I'm like, oh, what if this is going to lead me to the next best thing? And then you burn yourself out. So school, don't say no. Keep practicing and. You're going to suck when you first start doing makeup. I know I did. <laughs> like a suck as an oh, like the way I did the eyeshadows or something. But just keep going and don't give up if someone is going to criticize you. Um, that's business. You know, take it with a grain of salt and just make sure you keep improving and know between constructive criticism and learn from that. Damn, Millie with the fire. She just contoured <laughs> her way through those ideas. <laughs> um, who wants to go next? term. Who wants to go next? Uh, yeah, sure, I'll go. Uh, so I think on, on my side, I, you know, to reiterate kind of Millie's point as well there, it's kind of investing in yourself. Um, I think there is ample free content out there, whether it's YouTube, blogs, the internet, Google, just like there's, there's so much free content and um, almost everything is available to you. So like I've probably spent like in the thousands of hours just consuming that like free content, whether it's like podcasts, YouTube, like blogs, et cetera. Perfect, yeah. Um, so then you start with that and then you get to a point um, where you've kind of consumed them and you like I also I think I recommend people either find themselves kind of a mentor or a coach whether that's someone that you pay um, or that you offer your services in, in kind to which is kind of like what Millie was saying about the collabs right um, you get on you get on people's radars you learn from people that have done what you want to do um, so I think those are like kind of both very important things um, and the third thing I, I'd say is just just do it right um, I think especially in real estate there's a lot of like uh, people are, are kind of scared for about like jumping into their first one or, or whatever. So just jump into it, um, push yourself a little bit outside of your comfort zone um, and it'll, you know, make you grow and, and constantly be developing. Well, I, I, I do want to go back to one, one of your points, my, um, when you say find a mentor, how, how does one go, go about doing that? I mean, just yeah, in your experience. I, yeah. So I, I've had a few mentors, I guess, over, over the years, some are people that I've done things for free for just in exchange for me to kind of spend some time with them, see what they're doing, et cetera. That's perfect. Uh, so yeah. be like, I'll come help you with your paperwork. Cause like I've got nothing to do on Saturday and I know you're like very bookkeeping and I'm an accountant. So like, why not? Um, and then I go out there and I just like sit with them in their office, kind of see what they're doing at the same time. Right. Um, and then the second side of it is um, I, like I, I recently hired a coach and they're like well over like the five figure mark. Um, so it's like investing in yourself and you know, like you don't start with that. You start with people that are kind of like $50 a month or something. Right. And then you kind of like keep leveling up and, and, and so on as you need it. Right. Um, so yeah, so there's two ways to do it either with your time or, or with your money. <laughs> All right, Tanya, again, not last but not least. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to kind of echo there and then add to it. Um, what Millie said was basically the, the biggest piece of advice that we would give to people who would ask Anu in general. I don't think it's as easy in my blanket industry to kind of follow along with <laughs> someone, but uh, I know there's a ton of people trying to get into photography or makeup. And honestly, the best thing, the thing that I would tell everyone was work with anyone, work with everyone. If you're a makeup artist, then work on anybody's face, offer your services to any friend, auntie, uncle, like uncle, uh, cousin, whoever, so that you can practice, right? Like you want people to pay you, but do you want to screw up on someone who paid you? Or do you want to screw up on someone who you're offering for free, right? Same thing with photography. Do you want to take like 10 minutes to set up the lighting for someone who you've offered a free shoot to dude when Enu and I started I literally went on my Facebook because Facebook was the thing back then and I went through every single couple it didn't matter if they were married engaged like dating and I was like do you want a free shoot do you want a free shoot do you want a free shoot and I literally went through every single person and a lot of them took us up on our offer. Do you know how much better Enu got within the six month period before his first actual wedding that he got paid for in, and then the first shot and shoot that he did, right? Like, and it's the same thing. And, you know, even weddings, like, I mean, for photography, you, I could argue that you can't fully simulate everything outside of it because you can't simulate a wedding. Even if you wanted to set up a wedding setup, it's not the same, like, That's true. stress or, like, dilemmas that come in a, in a thing. But, like, for something like makeup, you can 
almost not exactly the same thing applies right there's other stress factors that come in but you could doll up a girl like head to toe as a bride and you can time yourself for a kura change and be like you know what you have i i'm going to give myself 10 minutes and be like can i really do this or if they what if they told you you have seven minutes to get this girl out the door then you have to practice and practice and practice right and you practice on different body types you practice on different skin tones because then you're not forced into one clientele right because your clients aren't or shouldn't be one one size fits all so that's one thing the second thing is um just do it like my said just just do it right like just start just do it um like i said before don't wait till it's perfect don't wait till you find the perfect house to invest in don't wait till you find um you know till your website is absolutely perfected until you start just it's not going to happen so just start it and then you can just learn along the way and the last thing would probably be, be um you know you have to have a really good work ethic especially if you're doing it as a side hustle um you're going to have to have like millie said before you, you, it has to be on your mind kind of all the time if you really want it to succeed if you have that hunger if you have that drive you need to have hard work you need to have determination you need to have perseverance because you're going to come across so many obstacles whether it's self-imposed because you were ignorant about the matter if whether it's you know, um, uh, circumstantial uh, things that are outside of your control, like COVID affecting your business somehow, or, you know, there are things like that, or there's people who might be out there who are deliberately <laughs> trying to um, prevent you from succeeding, right? Like that happens in just about every industry for every business in some way, shape or form. And that's the reality of it. And so your perseverance is a really big thing, uh, overcoming obstacles and um having hard work have having a really good work ethic um you know late nights are very common in my house right now because i have yeah. a full-time job i have two kids who are stuck with me in covid and i have uh, a side hustle that i'm trying to like launch and bring into fruition right that that means we only have so many hours in a day that means it's going to cut into your sleep sometimes that's awesome. I do appreciate you being here. I, I know you're a mom. And by the way, Facebook isn't out. It is for moms mainly now. So you are in the target demographic right now, by the way, with marketplace going hot right now. Like that's the marketplace is the hottest thing right now. Like if you want to use mug for some reason, it'll be there. So you're pretty good. I do want to say that um, you all said just do it. And we are not sponsored by Nike, but one day maybe. And I also do want to say that I hope I'm in a place where I'm so well-known and respected in the community that people do want to sabotage me and take me down because that's a term of endearment. Right. That is excellent. You haven't made it until you got a hater, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, exactly. Just talk to any athlete out there, any superstar out there. Um, they take one bad picture or they take one bad, or do one bad article, one bad quote, you know, one bad showing, you know, and people want to jump on them, right? It's just, it's just another day. Success. Um, I think we'll end off here, but I do want to hear your closing statements, like where people can find you. Um, if you got that information locked up or on a screen somewhere right now, I see Mayu, uh, Mayu shuffling around. He's, he's looking for yeah. which uh, email I'm, for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm terrible on the social media game. I just started this year <laughs> really posting anything. I was the guy that posted maybe once a year. Um, so I've just kind of been trying to improve that. So it makes me laugh. Um, I'll go first, I guess, because I'm already talking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just just follow me on Instagram, mayu.daba. So that's M-A-Y-U dot T-H-A-B-A. -A. Um, it's probably the best place to reach me, like DMs or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, definitely send them questions because I, I know everyone, like I said, everyone seems to want to get into that game. They don't really know half of what's going on. They just look, watch the TV and see numbers. And all those YouTube ads just show up and it's like, I got this. Do you want it? <laughs> I can show you. There's no work to be done or, or, for, or for you guys. Set up this Amazon store. It'll work Amazon itself for you, right? Like, it'll just do it for you. Thank you for that. Um, Millie, how about you? Um, I don't have any cue cards or something prepared, but... No worries. Me, um, Fiso underscore makeup. That's T-H-I-S-O underscore makeup. Um, that's where all, most of my bridal stuff and my selfies are <laughs> but um so underscore faces um is where my editorial work um and like different things are and i just started that last year because i wanted to have a, you know two different platforms for that yeah, no um, or my website which i hardly ever um do <laughs> i'm on i don't think i have to do it in the last three years but instagram is is perfect and thanks ari <laughs> 
I think you and Tanya should talk about that website stuff for sure. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Terrible. And you, Tanya, I guess? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram. It's at her sun and stars, H E R S U N A N D S T A R S dot co. Um, and my website is www.hersunandstars.com. And I hope what everyone does here is clear to everyone. I hope this podcast was clear. I know we jumped around a lot. Please, that's not an indication of your listening, but my presenting. So I, we've all, I mean, this is the most I've talked to people in a long time that wasn't a coworker per se. So that's great. Well, and I'm you glad you guys all that. spent some time with me. Um, so till next time, I'm Ari for TC Talks. Bye.